Do you know how much you need to spend on marketing? This is a common question that Josh and myself get when our clients come in and ask us. This is Josh Pearl. He's the author of this book called The 100 Myths of Entrepreneurship versus The Chainsaw. And if you'd like to get a copy of this, we will post it in the description below. Josh, this is the number one question. Business owners always wanted to cut their expenses, but they fail to understand that marketing is probably the best expense they could ever have, correct? That's right. Marketing is not an expense, it's an investment. It's an investment. Ah, I like that. Marketing okay. is not an expense, it's an investment. Right? Yes. We have to realize, you know, how unnatural this is going to feel. Right. Okay. Because you know, we're, you could be anywhere on the planet. Yep. And if you start the phrase, a penny saved is. Oh, I hate that. Is a penny saved? Is <laughs> a penny earned? It's right. still a fucking penny. That's right. It's just a penny, yeah. right? And so, you know, when we talk about spending money on marketing, yep. it's going to feel unnatural because. Right. You know, the conventional wisdom would suggest that if you can minimize expenses, you're actually, you know, maximizing your financial position. Okay. But you actually wrote here in the book here that not all expenses are equal. That's correct? right. Not all expenses are equal. Yep. Right? And so you have to realize that 60% of businesses that increase their profitability yes. do so by increasing the expenses that they incur on marketing. Okay. Okay. And so just think for a minute that like how unnatural this will feel, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, a penny saved is supposed to be a penny earned. But it's not going to be that way for a business owner that's operating from an unlimited revenue potential, right? Right. If you remember, 96% of the population doesn't own a business, right. right? So their way to increase wealth is to reduce expenses while they are on a fixed salary. Correct. So if you are a wage earner, you know, a regular employee, mm -hmm. and you're earning a fixed salary, yeah. and you reduce your expenses, you have more to invest. Correct. And that's kind of the way it works, and it's you know, rather sound advice, mm -hmm. right? But the whole thing falls apart right. when you're a business owner. Yeah. Because the amount that you're making, your revenue, is not fixed to anything. Right. It's only fixed by, you know, the, you know, your limiting beliefs and the structure of your business, right? right? And the number of leads that come in and... That's right, there's yeah. nothing saying that we can't double or triple or quadruple your revenue, right? right. Would you rather have zero dollars a month in marketing and you know a million dollars in sales or would you rather have you know ten thousand dollars a month in marketing and ten million dollars in sales, right? Easily the second. Yeah. You know, but people, you know, there's it's so difficult for them to make this because mm -hmm. this you know, penny saved as a penny earned has just been beat into them year after year, generation after generation, right? Yep. And you know, it's really difficult because all your friends and family will also abide by that, right? Yep. And Josh, you also have a quote here from the BDC that says 60% of businesses that have grown their profit did so by increasing their advertising, you know, spend. That's right. That's, that's kind of where yeah. that that stat comes from, right? Businesses grow when they increase their advertising. They increase their advertising spend, yep. right? And so we, we really have to take stock of, you know, like most of the things that you have to do as a business owner to win are unnatural. Right. You know, it's like the fireman example, yes. right? Everyone's taught to run out of the burning building. The fireman has to run back into the burning building, right? Yep. And most things about entrepreneurship are kind of similar. It's like, usually if it feels too natural, you better be careful. You That's might be right. doing something wrong, right? right. Um, it should feel a little bit unnatural. And so you need to look at marketing as um, it, it is an investment yep. into your business, right? Okay. Because the main expense that any business has, mm -hmm. it's actually, you know, it's it's not marketing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not your uh, it's not your administrative labor. It's not your rent. It's not your cost of sales even, right? Really? Okay. The single main expense that most business have is, you know, inactivity. Right, or they lost have, opportunities. That's right. They have the ability to produce, you know, wh whether it's 10,000 a month or 100,000 a month or 200,000 a month. Uh, right. Let's say it's 100,000 a month. They have the ability to produce $100,000 a month. They have access to the, the inventory and the supplies. They got the team to do it, right? Yep. And then they only produce 50,000 one month. Right. You know, the, you know, the expense of that was, you know, 50,000 in potential revenue that have gone out the door, right? Right. You had to pay for your rent, you had to pay for your administrators, but you didn't bring that 
revenue through the door. That's like saying like having an airplane that is perfectly good condition, but it's not flying, it's sitting on the ground. Correct. Correct. And it's costing you money sitting on the ground. It's the number one expense, right? Right. And usually when you look at a lot of businesses, like we, we had the example in the book about a dental clinic. That's right? right, yeah, you mentioned about that. Yeah. And the dental clinic had, you know, they were contemplating should they spend more on their radio ads or yeah. more on their Google ads. And just because their Google ads were doing pretty they're, good. They're at the time, yeah. Pretty good, right? Yeah. And they're gonna bring the radio on. And you know they didn't actually have enough data, especially in you know the dental realm where there's a degree of seasonality. People try to yeah. use up all their benefits towards the end of the year, right? Correct. Yeah. So they don't have even month-to-month -month revenue, right? Yeah. And so if you're trying to compare one month to the previous month, it might be a little bit misleading because one month just might be a higher demand month, right? Right. And so the suggestion was to them was not to actually decrease the Google ads in relation to also doing the radio. It was to do both simultaneously for a year. Yeah. You've done the Google ads for a year. Now let's do the radio and the Google ads for a year. And then let's look if we're going to adjust. Yeah, they right? were just trying to save a few thousand dollars by cutting one or the other That's right. for a few months, right? But when you looked at you know, the makeup of the clinic, that clinic, mm -hmm. you know, one month, one off month, yes. you know, where they could normally produce 200 grand in the month, and if they only produce 100 grand in the month, yeah. it clips the entire budget for either of those components, yeah, right? Yeah, they lost that 100,000. One bad month, they yeah. could have paid for a full year of those radio ads or a full year of the Google ads, right? Correct. It made no sense whatsoever. The risk reward is not there. Okay. Right? And so we have to be very, very careful, you know, if you're, if you're trying to, you know, save money by you know stopping advertising. It's yeah. like you know Henry Ford says it's, it's it's like trying to the man who's trying to you know save time by stopping his watch. Right, right? <laughs> the time is still going. It's, that's yeah. not how it's going to work, right? And so, a couple of, of parameters that mm -hmm. we like to put on people yes. is normally when we see businesses and they are spending less than two percent of their revenue on advertising. Yep, the chances that they're going to have a decline, mm -hmm. right? are significantly increased, right? Okay. And so we look at a business, they're not spending anything on, on advertising, they're spending 1% of their revenue on advertising. Yeah. The chances of that business going from a million in year one to say 800,000 in year two, yeah. sig significantly right. increased. Right, so even to say, yeah, so they're a million dollar business, they're not even spending $10,000 a month in advertising. 10,000 per year, right? Per year, per year. Per yes, year, sir. right? And so we're looking at one or 2% on that. Yeah. So, um, so that's kind of the, the baseline we recommend for mm -hmm. businesses. You know, it changes. Everyone has slightly different, you know, industries and uh, circumstances. But you know, we see less than two percent being spent on ads. Yeah. It's like a warning sign. It's yeah. like the flashing red light. It's like yeah. warning, danger, danger, danger. Yeah. You know, the chance that we're going to be sitting next year with that client and looking at a significant pullback in mm -hmm. revenue. It's not all the time. Yeah. But it's significantly increased, right? Okay. Um, so 2% and when I say advertising, I like to qualify that too mm -hmm. because a lot of people will put a lot of things in advertising. Yeah. You know, they're going to put the website development, you know, the license fee for the domain name, mm -hmm. right? They're going to sponsor their kids uh, hockey team or softball team or something. It's right. Like, I don't mean any of that. Right. All of that is completely separate. I mean the cold, hard ad spend. Yeah. Right? So I mean what you're spending on Google AdWords, yeah. what you're spending on Facebook, what you're spending on AdRoll. I mean yeah. actual ads that you're buying, not the website where the, you know, the ads flow to. I just mean the ads. And, and the ad budget is, is that just online ad budget? Or let's say you're a realtor, would you put up billboards, flyers, would that all fall into ad budget as well too? Um, I would be very hesitant to go less than 2% on revenue for your online ad budget. Okay, so that's just the online ad budget. I would go online ad budget yeah. because you know most people are spending money on offline advertising. Yeah. The problem is with a lot of the offline advertising is the prices have not come back down yeah. to adjust for the reduced eyeballs. Right. Right? Yeah. You know, you gotta think, you know, if you had a a billboard mm -hmm. 20 years ago. Yeah. Right? Everybody in the car was looking at the billboard. Right. Okay. Today, where is the passenger looking in the car? The GPS, their phone. They're looking down at their phone. Yeah. Right. So it's not that a lot of these offline advertising mechanisms have, you know, they're ineffective. Mm -hmm. It's just that the, you know, their effectiveness has been decreased. Yeah, right. Yeah. Nobody's really listening to the radio these days. That's right. Right. Yeah. People want to buy a billboard, and I said, mm -hmm. well, okay, well, how many cars drive by that? Right. Mm -hmm. And then compare that to how many impressions we can get on Google. Right. right. Yeah. And a lot of times they won't buy that uh, that offline advertising anymore. Yeah. Right. And so you need that, in my view, as a baseline, because two percent 
that's the minimum. Yeah. That is the minimum that I would spend, right? Mm -hmm. You know, companies, you know, how much you sh should you spend? I mean, the real answer is how much you should spend is more than your competitors to the yeah. point where you don't run out of money. Right. You know, because whoever spends the most on marketing usually wins the game. Correct. That, that, that is usually who wins the game, right? Yeah. So it's usually going to be a sustainable rate between somewhere in two to five percent. Right? Okay. So if you have 2% in your online initiatives and then you want to put another percent into that billboard or you know you want to put another percent into the radio ads, right? Yeah. That's okay, right? Okay. Um, somewhere usually between that 2 and 5%. 2% would be kind of the maintenance client. Yeah. You got a million dollars worth of revenue and your goal is to do a million dollars next year and yeah. you want to be 99% certain you're going to do it, spend 2%, right? Right. If you want to be 80% that you're going to do, you know, a million, yeah. right? Okay, spend nothing on ads, but what's the risk reward there, right? Right, yeah. You know, you're gonna save 20 grand to potentially do $200,000 less in revenue. Right, like, It's just a, it's a bad choice mathematically, right? Okay. You know, not all decisions matter equally, right? Our, right. our goal in business is to avoid catastrophic decisions and just yeah. make as many decisions as possible. So Josh, in these videos, you always give uh, very actionable steps for the entrepreneurs that watch this video. And if it's your first time watching this video, you can also go into the description, pick up a copy of the book, also find out about the boot camp that Josh and myself, we put on several times a year where you can come and physically meet us with other entrepreneurs live in person, asking your questions as well as discussing the latest trends and topics of what's happening to actual business owners right now in the world. Josh, what action steps would you recommend for a business owner that was considering to cut their ad budget or their marketing budget? Um, what other areas should they focus on cutting and what should they really do with the ad budget? If they don't have any ads going right now, what should they do? Number one, they need, the, the first thing is if you're not running $1,000 a month in online ads, yeah. I mean, you should go complete scorched earth on your other expenses to find $1,000 a month. Right. I don't care if you're eating ramen noodles for a couple of months. Like, yeah. Jack up sales, you, eat ramen noodles. You yep. need to do whatever you can to get $1,000 a month in online ads, right? Yeah, and, and what kind of ads are those? Google ads. Yep. So Google search ads, Facebook ads yep. and ad roll retargeting. Is that a thousand each or just thousand spread between them? A thousand between, spread between them, right? Okay. And if you don't know how to do it, there are people out there who know how to do it. Or reach out to us and you know perhaps Josh can point you in the right direction. So I would do that. Yep. Number two, if you are spending money on ads, you need to separate how much you're spending on other advertising. Yeah. You know, the sponsoring the softball team or the web developer versus how much is your cold, hard ad spend. Right? Yeah. Get that number, know what that number is, mm -hmm divide that annual number by your expected annual revenue. Okay. If it's less than 2%, then we have a problem, mm -hmm. right? We have a problem. And then if you're struggling, if you want to be, you know, a business that increases profitability, we know that 60% of the businesses that increase profitability do so by increasing their online ad yes. spend. Yeah. It's a cold hard stat. We might, we might want it to be different. Yeah. We might want it to be because, you know, we got slightly better at our trade, right? Yeah. Um, but you know, what's the one that Trevor says in the, in the, in the boot camp? It's like, yeah. you know, it's like winking at a girl in the dark, yeah. you, know, you, you know, you're, you know, you're doing it, but no one else does. Right. That's it's, right. It's like, you know, that's what has to happen is you have to tell the world that, Hey, I'm here. This is what I do. And yeah. we're pretty good at doing this. And here's the number to call. Right. Um, that has to happen. So you're generally going to set those bumpers between two and 5%. Right. Yeah. And people, sometimes people are like 5%. I'm like, yeah. If you look at the, the top performers in your marketplace, mm -hmm. they're not making more money because they're spending less than you on advertising. Almost every time they're making more money than you because they're spending more money on advertising, that's right? right? That's also because they've got healthy margins, they've got good lead flow coming in, they've got, um, they, they've got good management of the understanding of their uh, you know, balance sheets yeah. and their, their profit loss statements. And if you wanna find out more about those videos, we've also got some about that in the playlist up here. So go check those playlists out, watch those videos because we talk about how do you find that extra budget to put back into your marketing and if you don't understand your financials, you also won't know how to do that as well too. So with that being said, we will see you in the next video.